Let's go ahead and go to the phone and we already connected our printer with the scan and scan the barcode. So let's go ahead and just search calibration cube in the search bar and here we have a few cubes that pop up so we can just choose some random one I'm guessing this one looks pretty generic there so we're gonna click on slice so here we have to choose our printer make sure you choose yours here we have the k1c and so there are profiles we're on balanced and we do have like the full control of the slicer here on everything but we're gonna leave it the way it is click on the balance and you have dynamic here also so this is gonna be like a higher quality but they recommend using just balance so we can see here our little cube in the slicer and when you're ready you're going to click slice so it sliced it for us here we're going to click on print so we need to make sure we move everything out of the way here choose our printer it's going to confirm make sure nothing's there so it's giving you a tip here to enable the calibration so it can check everything again i'm going to cancel that and it starts to print for some reason there's an error on our camera it says no signal not sure exactly what happened here they're probably just buggy software but as you guys can see it started and it loaded up our file here which is the calibration cube. And here we can see the status of what the printer is doing. You can stop it. You can adjust the parameters here, which it doesn't give you much choice to adjust much. So, But if you do click on, let's say, the temperature, something else will pop up here. It lets you adjust that. Okay, so now that it's starting, we got more options that popped up. So you can adjust the speeds also. And it also shows us the inside temperature. And there it goes. So now we're printing with black. PLA just the generic stuff and apparently the cube I chose is huge oh wait maybe that's the raft okay so I forgot to go through the settings and I guess the raft was on so but yeah you can adjust everything in the slicer on the phone which is really cool All right, so we ended up printing a couple things, not just the cube, but also a benchy and a spool relocation mount. And so our calibration cube actually turned out pretty reasonable. We did have a raft, which I did turn off for the benchy. Well, let's see how easy it pops off. It's stuck on there pretty well. All right, so it doesn't want to come off easy. I'm just going to leave it. It's just breaking off. So definitely not the best raft execution here, at least on the standard profile. In any case, let's just look at the axis. So the X is a little vibrate or ghosty, I guess I could say. There's some artifacts in it. The Y actually is very nice, which is quite interesting. Pretty big difference. And then that's the X wall. We can see there's some stuff there towards the end. And then the Y wall, which is much better. The raft bottom and the top looks pretty good too. So yeah, not bad. And I believe this cube would be only about 10 minutes or less without the raft. So yeah, it is printing quite quick on the standard profile, but obviously you'd want that for a Core XY machine. Now our bench here, it's still stuck, let's see. So yeah, I haven't had any issues with the bed sticking too hard so far. So I'm not using any kind of glue or not sticking good enough where it pops off. But there was a little blob here that got stuck when it started printing. So this bench here is 33 minutes, what it says. So about 30 minutes to print on the standard profile. And this is what we got. So let's look at the, well, I guess let's start here with the bottom. So it looks pretty good. The walls look very nice, actually. There's very minimal ghosting or vibrations, especially in this area here where usually you would see something going on, but it looks clean. And the back there, we got some ringing, but not horrible. Again, guys, this is a 30 minute benchy. So, and the top actually looks quite good too. Yeah, definitely looks a lot more composed than the 16 minute benchy. Now the last print we have here is actually included in the printer. And this is a spool relocation. And this turned out pretty well. So the bottom here, we can see there's something a little bit here. Yeah, with a smooth surface like this, you can really tell if there's any gaps, which there are a little bit. But yeah, other than that, everything else looks pretty good. It, again, we didn't slice this at all. So it is a little stringy. It's something not a heat gun can just get rid of and just blow a little bit of hot air it's very very fine stringy you can really see how every layer sits and the reason i wanted to print in the black is because turn this thing around you guys can see the spool holders here right now so this little bracket relocates it to the side of the printer and it goes something like this basically these three bolts here line up and then the spool holder will go in here 
And so now the spool will sit on the side and then kind of go out here. It's not really at the right angle. It could work still, but maybe need a longer tube here for a better guide. So, but what's awesome is they include that with the printer if you want to go this option and relocate your spool, which is kind of neat. And while we're back here, let's go ahead and install some brand new roll of PLA carbon fiber. So this is practically like regular PLA, but it has lots of carbon fiber chunks or pieces, I guess, inside the filament. So you definitely need a hardened nozzle to print this, which this printer obviously can do. And so because this is PLA, we could still print it just like you would print any other PLA. Now that we got some carbon fiber in there, let's quickly jump to the computer and I'll show you guys how easy it is to slice just from the Creality Cloud website. And maybe we'll do another benchy here, but this time with the carbon fiber enhanced PLA. All right, so here we are at the CrealityCloud.com, and yeah, it's actually quite easy to use here right off the website. But before we go there, I want to show you guys here the differences. Maybe you can see between the K1, K1 Max, and the K1C. I guess mostly here from the K1 to K1C. You guys can see it's mostly all similar, except for when we get to the carbon fiber stuff here which the C can do. And then we also got the all metal direct drive extruder and the tri-metal nozzle. That's the big difference. Even the Max doesn't have that. But everything else, as you guys can see, is the same, which is pretty crazy that the difference is not that huge, but it's enough to make it its own model. In any case, so here back at the cloud, let's go ahead and get a Benchy again. So we just need a normal one, obviously. So you can download it and, and do whatnot else with it, but we're just gonna slice it here on the machine. And you guys can see we got the same kind of menus here as we did on our phone for the slicing. So we need to change our device type here to, let's see, my printers is here, there we go, K1C. So we'll click on that. And here we can adjust all the parameters. And so you wanna go from basic to advanced so you can see a little more. In any case, everything looks good here. We do need to unclick the raft because we don't want rafts. The print speed on the balanced or standard is 300. And by the way, we only have dynamic or balanced as choices. You can obviously make your own and fine tune the parameters to your machine. We're gonna stay pretty standard here. See the retraction is 0.5 as standard. This needs to be probably 0.8 or one. I'm just gonna try one millimeter. Here we have the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature is actually pretty hot for the nozzle, but we'll leave it as it is, as it is printing pretty quick here. But yeah, simple as that guys. You have all your other controls here on the other side and it's just like a normal slicer. So if we click the slice, it's gonna slice it up. So that's our previous benchy here and this is our newer one there. Practically the same, I would think, but in any case, so here we have preview, print, and download. So we're gonna click on print, choose our machine that's available, which is online, click print. And so here it says to enable calibration. I'm gonna cancel that because I think the printer's calibrated. Now it's asking us to make sure nothing's on the build plate, which I know it's not. We did extrude there our filament, but that's not a big deal. And there we go, and you guys can see we actually have our camera working now. So, yeah, I guess the phone just went into a glitch mode. Probably just need to be restarted. But yeah, we can see our build plate going up. And so the camera is set up right at the nozzle, or I guess towards the middle of the bed. So you can't see as much as you would think. So even if I go full screen here, well, you guys can only see a small piece of it. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, you can't see as much as you would think you can, as the field of view is quite narrow but still you can see pretty much the whole build plate here. And here we have the status of what the printer is doing. And then when it starts printing, all of this will be highlighted and you'll be able to use this bottom section. All right, so now it started the prints and you guys can see the whole bottom here opened up. It's not grayed out now and we can see that we can adjust our temperatures. Nozzle and bed, we can see our chamber temperature. The speed is locked, so we can't adjust that. Things are unlocking like this fan just unlocked as the printer continues to print. Then we can control our LED here in the back fan. So yeah, pretty good controls. And here we can see the status. We got 2% done. We're on third layer, time passed, time remaining, which is one hour and 20 minutes. Doesn't make sense. I don't think that's correct, but who knows? I think it's gonna be only 30 minutes. I think it's way off because I remember it showing it last time that that's slow, but it actually finished in 33 minutes. But yeah, the Vinci, we can see in the video a bit here in the feed that everything is okay. It is a little dark, but still better than nothing. And you can switch here between the camera and the slice. So yeah, we are printing in carbon fiber PLA right now. And yeah, the Creality Cloud is very easy to use. And the best part about it is that you can use it on your phone slash computer. And then if you want a dedicated slicer, you can use the Creality Print application. 
that looks like this, which is a real slicer. And this is where you would add your printer. So yeah. And just like the last one, this one is 33 minutes exactly. But this time we got carbon fiber infusement. Let's see, is it gonna pop off? Or, oh, look at that. Even though the bill plate's still warm. Well, I guess it's not that warm, it's only 45, but. Yeah, pretty cool, and wow, right away, guys, I can see that this looks so much better. Yeah, I think these fans are kind of wow. It's trying to cool itself off, just put the covers on. But yeah, check it out, guys. This is a whole new world here with this one. I guess my other filament's maybe not that great, but yeah. Bottom looks the same, and oh, look how smooth those sides are. This carbon fiber infused PLA just looks super nice. It's kind of got us like a textured matte finish to it. Yeah, I guess if you print with higher quality filaments, you're going to get higher quality results. And this is what we got out of this one. So here's just a comparison of the last one. I guess the shininess kind of gives away the vibrations and whatnot else. And then our new one here in carbon fiber just looks so much more nicer and lower reflections kind of hide everything. So super cool.